Hello to all our dear fans of rubbers, rackets, and table tennis. In this video, we'll talk about the durability of blades, their wear and tear, and when to replace them. Wooden blades essentially don't have a parameter such as durability. We need to distinguish between wear from playing tennis and damage from hitting the table, floor, wall, head, or from the racket flying out the window onto the street. Many players are familiar with various chips and damage to the blade edges from hitting the table. Sometimes, blades can break in unexpected ways from table impacts. For example, the blade may delaminate internally between layers in the impact area. It can even delaminate from the bottom of the handle up to the paddle. We've seen such a strange case. The handle was tightly wrapped, but this didn't prevent the delamination. There was also a case when during a rally at a tournament, a regular multiply blade split into two parts. It's a pity this moment wasn't caught on camera. During a flat hit on a high ball, the paddle with the rubbers decided to separate for some reason and flew forward following the ball. The player was left at the table with just the handle and some thoughts in his head, you can imagine what kind. This happens due to impacts with the table, usually as a cumulative effect. If you don't damage the blade by hitting it against the table and don't sit on your bag containing the blade, then you could say it has no durability limit at all. In the vast majority of cases. But occasionally, the opposite can happen, which we'll discuss at the end. In most cases, for typical players, if the blade isn't broken, crushed, or doesn't have a refrigerator dropped on it, it can serve for 10 to 20 years. And if you take a 20 year break from tennis, it could serve even last 40 years. We're not sure about longer than 40 years. We haven't been able to verify that yet. Of course, this is all assuming you don't subject your racket to various tests. For example, leaving the racket in the trunk in the sun. Such heat will damage both the blade and the rubbers. Also, don't subject the racket to prolonged moisture exposure and don't keep it under direct sunlight. In general, if you play carefully and store the racket in a closet, desk, storage room, safe, or bank deposit box, the blade's durability will likely be such that you'll get bored of it before it wears out. But usually, they get broken, damaged, sold, or lost much earlier. In general, for wooden blades, it's easiest to consider that they have no durability limit. This is about typical multiply wooden blades we all know, usually with five or more layers. We should separately mention single ply blades. Essentially, it's a single piece of wood that grew peacefully somewhere in a dense forest and was unlucky enough to be cut down. Then it was cut to a special shape, processed, had two wooden blocks attached to the handle for thickening, and sent to the store. Due to this monolithic construction, single ply blades are more fragile than multiply wooden blades. So if you use a single ply blade, avoid any impacts with the table. And of course, protect the blade edges as much as possible. Now let's talk separately about carbon blades. Carbon and other composite blades are a slightly different topic. Some high skilled players, but far from all, say that after some time of using a blade with carbon, the carbon somehow breaks through in the blade. The blade's characteristics change, not always for the worse. Some people like the blade more after a couple of years of play than when it was new. It's important to understand that high skilled players wear out rubbers much faster than the average amateur player. For example, it's often the case that a high skilled player plays for one month, and that's it, they need to change the rubber. It's like giving a punching bag to a boxing master and asking them to beat it up, then recording how long the bag lasts. Then conducting the same experiment with an amateur beginner boxer and comparing the results. So, regarding blades with synthetic layers, there is such an observation, but not all masters mention it. I assume this is related firstly to sensitivity in different people. Secondly, the term, carbon, actually encompasses many different varieties of carbon fiber. There are many synthetic options. I don't know this for sure and can only assume that some carbon variants might break little bit through over time if subjected to impact loads for a long time and frequently. But not all blades with synthetic materials have this effect. Because there are many carbon blades that have been used for many years without any complaints from their owners. This is roughly the situation with blade durability. But sometimes it happens that a blade comes to an end. 
Either way, while we're making interesting and useful videos and reviews for you, visit our TT Maximum store more often for purchases. This will be your best way to thank us for our videos. So, it happens that you need to buy a new blade because something is wrong with the old one. You play and see that some balls bounce off poorly. They bounce not where they should. And because of this, you lose points. It happens that you don't hit the blade against the table, but it wears out, and at some point, you start to feel that the bounce at the edges of the racket is too weak. Significantly weaker than in the central area. At the same time there are already many small damages on the edge. This indicates that indeed the edge area of the blade has worn out. The wood has received many micro damages, many micro fractures have appeared in the blade layers. Many micro cracks, due to which the edges of the blade have very different properties, and the racket plays differently. This can happen with intensive use. For example, if you play five times a week and often change rubbers. Firstly, when you play a lot, it's physical traumatic impact. Plus, there are still impacts with the edge on the table. Even if they are weak, due to the large amount of play, they occur more often than usual. Plus, if you often change rubbers. This means you're tearing off rubbers from the blade, and each time there's a tearing impact on the top layer of the blade. Glues can be different, some glues stick stronger, and because of this, when removing the rubber, the top wooden layer of the blade gets damaged. It gets damaged insignificantly, perhaps imperceptibly, but still, the veneer weakens and loosens. It becomes more susceptible to moisture, which is present in the glue. As a result, gradually the top layer of the blade begins to absorb moisture, and it further loosens and weakens the wood. As a result, the top layer begins to delaminate more, and at the edges, as I mentioned earlier, the bounce strength becomes significantly weaker. And at some point, you might even think that your blade needs to be dried periodically. Yes, I'm not joking, these are situations from practice. With such comprehensive intensive use, even a strong high quality blade can degrade and wear out in 5 to 6 years. So if you're a tennis fan and often experiment, it might be better to have 2 to 3 blades for this, identical or different. I have 3 of them. And one of my acquaintances has as many as 8. And don't ask me why so many. I don't know. That's all. If you have any questions on this topic, ask them in the comments below the video. Goodbye for now.